All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our midweek devotion for April 17th. Tax day was two days ago. School is coming to a close soon enough. Uh, when you're living in a house like ours, we got two seniors at once, and their last school day is the 26th for one school, and then I don't know when it is for the their college. I don't know. I, I, I quit trying to keep up. I literally, I just kind of check in with my wife, the keeper of the calendar, and then I get her to tell me what's coming today, what's coming tomorrow, what's coming when, where, and how, and, and just try to be available for whatever is asked of me. But right now is the time that I get to sit here and be with you and share just a little something. Uh, when you're graduating seniors and when you're marrying, wedding wedding uh your oldest, and, and all of the other things that have baseball, basketball, volleyball, that's going backwards in order, and all the different things that go on in life. And that's not counting when you have things that you're responsible for in your work or things you're responsible for at home or when you're helping others. All the different things, it's just all of these things can sometimes pile on. And what we do often without thinking is we begin to lose perspective. And I just wanted to offer you a thought about that. But first, let me give you some calendar things. I haven't had a bunch of announcements really to share recently uh, in the past couple of weeks, but I got some now. So I wanted to share them with you. And so first and foremost, it's coming to a close. Like I say, it's coming to an end. So we've got two things taking place with our after-school kids, our Awana kids. And it's kind of Look at the bottom first. If you're scribbling things down, if you like to write them down, this will, of course, all be on our calendars at church. But just so to give you some heads up, uh, on the 5th is a Sunday, but I, I, I'm excited about the bottom. That's why I said look there first, because it's eating. You know I love eating. We get to eat two Wednesdays in a row. If you're, if you're an after-school person, that's, that's fantastic. We're going to have an award ceremony, though, to celebrate these people, these young folks who have done an absolutely fantastic job this school year memorizing scripture, Bible trivia them, trivia questions, and quizzing themselves, doing all these things. We want to celebrate that. We want to celebrate them. We want to appreciate those parents that have, again, entrusted those kids to us, but also we want to give parents a chance to celebrate those children as well during a worship service. So on May 5th, we're going to dedicate that time period to those young people. And again, I can't stress this enough. They don't just Memorize a Bible verse, great, check mark, move on. They memorize that Bible they memorize a Bible verse. Started in well, September was the first full month they had. It started then, and every month we added one, but we didn't take any away. And what I mean is they reconfirmed their memory on the very first one and then added a second and a third and a fourth and a fifth. So some of them uh, have committed themselves to that and have memorized multiple passages of scripture this school year but done so while remembering all of them collectively. So sometimes we kind of memorize one, great, forget it, move on. This time we wanted to do a little different. And so we, we made them kind of re-up their memory. And, and I mean, they have so many reasons to be proud. And, and so anyhow, I uh, want to celebrate that on May 5th, 10 a.m. And then on the 8th, my favorite thing, we're going to have an end-of-the-year party for all of them. So we're going to have a pizza party. We've got you know, drawing for prizes. We want to celebrate them, but we also literally just want to look for a chance to have a good time together and celebrate that school is come, coming or has come. I think in Grace Christian world, the last day of school will be the very next day, May 9th. So uh, public school friends got to go a little bit longer, but it's coming to a close and we want to celebrate that. Summer brings a whole lot of stuff, a whole lot of excitement on its own. And so that's going to be on May 8th. So if you're an Awana parent, or an Awana little one, you got a little one that, that spends time with us, or you're an after-school Awana worker here at East Louisville, then these two days are going to be important to you. And then I want to add to that that on the 28th, just a little before the, the switch over to May, we get to recognize our graduates for 2024. We have one, two, three, four high school graduates and two college, community college graduates and so we want to be able to celebrate them. I've been scribbling down ideas to share with them directly for all of us, but to them specifically uh, for a while now. And I, I look forward to this. We not only have our, our recognition of them during the worship service, but then each of them have a little place to set up some memorabilia of their high school or community college years uh, in the gym. And we'll have a little reception to celebrate them. So that's going to be Sunday, April 28th. And then also, I want you to remember that our Embrace Grace baby shower is coming up. And so 
you're you're invited. I know I, I like to tease men and women. You know, guys don't go to baby showers, and I think that's still collectively true. I'll be at this one, but this is a chance to love on, for lack of a better way of putting it, to many of us total strangers. We pray for these young mothers privately, quietly, away from the action, so to speak. But we have some very dedicated women in our congregation who have loved these young women, who have made it a a part of their week to be with us and to learn about God's plan for them as mothers, as young ladies. And so part of that celebration and that process is to honor them and celebrate them with a baby shower. We have that privilege. And so that's going to be May 2nd at 6 p.m. It's going to be right here at church in the gym, like like normal. You know this. If you've been around long enough, you know all of this. But I encourage you to, to find find a way to be a part of this because your presence is another testimony of what they've been told not merely being words sometimes and i'll be i'll be first in line to say that unfortunately the christian church is sometimes very theoretical meaning we'll talk about a lot but sometimes struggle to do very little and and i'm blessed that here with you in this faith family we have pushed against that we have turned that and this is a chance to do something like it. you know to love them is so sweet it's beautiful, but to love them with your presence as well doesn't change your love. It changes their understanding. It makes it real in a way that it hasn't been yet. So if you can be there May 2nd, I encourage you to do it. That is that, that is probably the busiest week almost of my life. We've got graduations and graduation practices and baby showers, and it's, it's going to come to a close, but between here and now, we're just going to burn the candle at all the ends, okay? So when you do that, when you live that way, and some of you may be like that right now, some of you may be in the middle of that, we lose perspective. I lose perspective. I start finding it too easy to focus on what isn't working out to the detriment of understanding all of the good that is working out. I forget to count all of the blessings. You know, you sing that hymn so often in in church when you're growing up or as you attend church as an adult, count your many blessings, name them one by one until you get super busy and you forget what a blessing looks like because now you've begun to count and name your annoyances, your frustrations, your worries. And and if you do that long enough, then things start to hurt. You know, your back hurts, your knees hurt, you didn't sleep well, your body is trying to help you get done what you are asking it to do. And so you have a chemical in you called cortisol, and that's the stress hormone, and your body's releasing that, and it says, look, man, we're under, we're under the gun. We've got to get the moves. We've got to get the plays. We've got to have it happen. You know, God bless Casey and those boys playing baseball. Becky and I <clears throat> were at a baseball game last night, and uh, I even told my wife, I said, you know what? All three of them are grown at this point, so I'm giving myself permission to buy a big boy soccer chair <laughs> because ever since we've had kids and bought soccer chairs I always have bought the ten dollar advertisement chairs you know what I'm talking about you go into academy sports they're in a gigantic cardboard box they all say academy sports on the back they maybe are in purple green blue red a couple of colors they're ten bucks and after about 30 minutes they're uncomfortable well that baseball game lasted well I was sitting in that chair almost four hours all told and yeah, the backside was plenty happy to tell me no more. <laughs> but while you're sitting there, your body's like, Phew, it's starting to hurt, starting to ache. Let me release some of this stress hormone to push me through, to get me through. Um, you consume caffeine, you consume sugar, all these different ways to, to get by. And you start to lose that perspective of how good God's gift of life has been and is and will continue to be for eternity. You're going to come across trouble. You're going to stumble across things. You're going to have pain in the in your life and I don't just mean cheap uh, soccer chair pain you know I'm gonna but I, I mean that by the way just a little pause I'm gonna buy one of those fancy ones with the little shocks that I can rock in oh yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the coolest dude at, at, at the reunion this year because I told her I, I'm giving myself permission to find I don't want one that's three hundred dollars don't get me wrong but more than ten that's gonna be my rule so uh, but but we forget how to see beauty because it seems natural to see pain. It seems natural to see difficulty and to focus in on that. And as Paul was writing and teaching and revealing truth to the Romans, 
you come across a Bible verse in chapter 8, and it's not. It's not chapter 8, 28. Very important, very good, very significant verse in the Bible that God works out all things for good. Notice, as I have said on here before, I'm sure, it says he works them out. He doesn't say that all things are good in the way that we might understand it, but it's before that. It's before he makes that statement in chapter 8. It's, it's verse 18, and so got a little picture to put behind me. So Romans 8, 18. I think this is a generalization translation. I just liked the way they wrote my last name there in the middle. This is, here it says, the pain that you've been feeling can't compare to the joy that's coming. I actually, my brain partly wants to think that's a lyric from a song. Here's what the New English translation says. I consider that our present sufferings cannot even be compared to the coming glory that will be revealed to us. So that's... That's nothing wrong with that behind me there. The pain that you've been feeling, nothing about what you're dealing with today can hold a candle, can even come close to being in the same category as the joy, as the overwhelming joy that's on its way to you. Now, I know that you might be tempted, as I normally am, to hear that, that that coming glory is way out there, heaven type things. But I really want to encourage you to remember that the joy, the glory, no, in its complete fullness, no, you will never see in this life. Down here, we might say, in this tent, in this tabernacle, Peter and Paul both talk about this body as just a dwelling. Well, in that, down here, I'm never going to see the full joy or the full glory as I will in heaven. But Jesus says he wants me to see some. I came that you might have joy. I want you to have life and have it abundantly. God wants me to be in tap with, with him and to receive all of this. And I need to remember that even when I'm focused on this wrong perspective of but I'm hurting right now. I might be hurting because I'm, I'm dealing with something I don't like. Or I'm hurting because I'm just dealing with 80 things at once. Or whatever it is, it's, it's something that's encouraging me to take my eyes off of the truth. But Paul says, when I think about that, I think about the present suffering. However I see myself suffering in this life. When I think about that, I, I realize... Well, to put it in Papa terms... It's not really that big of a deal. I respect that in the midst of a trial or in the midst of a great difficulty, that's a pretty bold thing to say to somebody, hey, you know, this really isn't that big of a deal. And so I certainly don't recommend you say that like, you know, at someone's deathbed or once they've just received really difficult medical news and anything like that. I, and there's a time and a place. But, but Paul is saying that, that even in those moments, maybe we can only hear that in reflection, but even in those moments... Paul is, is saying, when I think about it, it's nothing compared to what's coming. And so even in the midst of your little hard, something better is on its way. Good, pleasure, joy. Not, not you're going to be filthy rich, not you're winning the lottery, not somebody's paying your bills. I just mean relief. It's coming. It's on its way. If I don't see it until I'm in heaven, okay then. Because eternity is a long time to be in the presence of all that glory. But I might catch a glimpse of it sooner than that. And I need that life perspective to override and scream and shout over the noise of, I just can't go on. I just can't do. I can't deal. I can't handle. I can't manage. You can. You might. Total different subject. Uh, total different recording, I suppose. But you might need a readjustment. <laughs> There might be some things you need to put down. There might need to be some things you redefine, but you can do it. Like the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1, you've been given everything needed for life and godliness, and that's something you shouldn't forget. Keep the perspective that no matter what might be happening now, it can't honestly compare with what is coming, with what's on the way. Left the station, barreling forward, coming to you and me. Let's thank God that that's the truth together tonight. Father, Jesus, I'm so, I'm so very grateful for all the truth that you reveal to us in Scripture. 
And tonight I'm specifically thankful for being reminded that it's okay. It's okay. Being tired is okay. Being, being a little worn down is okay. But, but it's also important that we be reminded that even though those things might be the way they are, even though we might be busier than we've ever been or more worried about conditions in the world than we've, all the different things that pull at us and want to fix our perspective on life as though it's some sort of punishment or difficulty or it's never going to change, that you are there to help us see things correctly and to be reminded about all that we're allowed to experience through the saving grace that was provided to us through Jesus. Lord, thank you for reminding me where I need to be looking. Thank you for reminding me that no matter what might be happening around me or in me, better things are coming. And they're coming down here when we're able to breathe, when we're able to sit, when we're able to release. And so we look towards that. We look forward to that. I, I pray for every single person hearing this or not, who, who might be in that same position, that you would remind their souls there's a relief and it's on its way. It might even be right in our face. We just need to be shown how to take it. But Lord, thank you that no matter what we're going through and no matter what we might be asked to deal with, it is of so little consequence, so little impact when compared to the joy, to the glory that is, that is ours in you. Help us realize that, help us understand that, and help us accept that every single day, no matter what we're asked to face, for the glory of Jesus alone, in in that name, and in that name only do we pray. Amen. All right, amen. Thank you so much for being here. I hope God is blessing you. I hope he is revealing himself to you in ways you never even thought were possible. And so now as we come to a close here, you're going to go on to the next good thing. And so I pray that once you get there, you're reminded that our greatest responsibility and our calling on this earth, in part, is to pour kindness out on the world, all because of the kindness Jesus has first poured out on each of us. I love you. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you next time, everyone. Bye-bye.